This video is an introduction to the pyramid of evidence that's used in evidence-based medicine, or EBM. EBM uses a hierarchical system of classifying evidence based on the type of study that the evidence comes from. This video will describe the different types of studies that appear on the pyramid, and we will use research from the H1N1 pandemic of 2009. In the spring of 2009, a novel influenza A virus of a subtype H1N1 was detected in the United States and it quickly spread throughout the world. This new strain wasn't previously detected in animals or people, and clinicians were at first unsure of how it would progress. They relied on expert opinions and background information from previous influenza outbreaks to guide their clinical decision making while more information was being gathered. Background information and expert opinion are on the first level of the pyramid, and while these publications may contain high quality, trustworthy information, the studies may be generalized or not based on actual evidence. Early in 2009, H1N1 was first identified and reported on in individual case reports. Case reports are a detailed report of the symptoms, signs, diagnosis, treatment, and follow-up of an individual patient. Case reports usually describe an unusual or novel occurrence, and as such, they remain a cornerstone of medical progress and provide many new ideas in medicine. However, case reports also contain anecdotal evidence, and the information may not be broadly applied across many different patients. With the spread of H1N1 progressing, health centers were seeing enough patients who were being diagnosed with a novel strain that case series were being published about groups of patients. A case series is a study of a group of patients who are treated in a similar manner, but without a control group. In the ensuing weeks and months, as medical professionals work to understand the pathophysiology and mechanisms of spread of H1N1, cohort studies were being performed on groups of people to determine the patterns and how the virus was spread. Cohort studies are longitudinal studies that look at a cohort or a group of people who share a defining characteristic, and they look at them over time. Some cohort studies compare people who have shared a common exposure with those who haven't, and they study the lifestyle and medical histories of people in each group to learn what factors may be associated with a disease or a condition. These are called retrospective studies, and they look at past behavior. Retrospective studies might look at the social demographics of patients who've been in contact with H1N1 influenza. Another type of cohort study compares people who have shared a common exposure with those who haven't, and they're followed over the course of their disease. These studies are called prospective studies, and they measure the effects of an intervention. For instance, researchers might want to look at groups of people who are diagnosed with H1N1 to determine their outcomes. In due time, researchers investigating H1N1 came up with therapies for treating this influenza and with potential vaccines for stopping the spread of this type of flu. Controlled trials were used to study the effectiveness of the vaccine and of therapies for influenza-related complications. Randomized control trials are studies in which the participants are divided by chance into separate groups that compare the different treatments or interventions. They're considered a gold standard for testing the efficacy of a therapy. Lastly, after a number of RCTs and other trials have been conducted, researchers can pool the results from all the available studies and published papers to find an answer to a specific research question. This type of article is called a systematic review. And according to Cochrane, a systematic review attempts to identify, appraise, and synthesize all the empirical evidence that meets pre-specified eligibility criteria to answer a specific research question. It may take years for enough research to be conducted on a specific disease or condition before researchers can conduct a systematic review. And not all topics are studied enough to warrant a systematic review. When practicing evidence-based medicine, it's important to find the highest level of evidence available that addresses your clinical question. As you can see in this video, depending on how new or well-studied your topic is, 
you may be limited on the types of studies that are available to answer your clinical question. To learn more about the levels of evidence and evidence-based medicine, view our LibGuide at mcw.libguides.com/ebm or contact your local medical librarian.